What's up, everyone? This is North Dakota State University wide receiver Phoenix Bros here, and I'm excited to announce that I have a live radio interview with the man himself, Stephen Cuoco. It'll be on Power 98.5 Radio, and you can catch it at 12 p.m. Central Time. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. This is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco. On Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Woo! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are. With me, live on air with Stephen Cook on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hope you're tuning in on either the iOS or Android app. Alexa, you can listen to you know Power 98.5 Satellite Radio in your vehicle if you got Alexa available. Once again, I own the satellite radio station. I get asked quite often, is this on Sirius XM? Is what, what's going This is Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. And yes, Stephen Cuoco here. I own the satellite station. We are based out of Manchester, UK, and here in the States in New York City. Well, you can head on over to power985.com. Click the bottom tick in the bottom right hand corner. We can answer any questions. Got a good team ready to, you know, let you know, hey, you got an MP3, a new track. What's coming up? You got an event? Let us know. If we can go ahead and travel to the location, we will come there and be there live and broadcast live with you. Uh, what else is going on? Anything else? Well, hey, y'all know we've got Phoenix Sprawls with us today. My Aries buddy, Mr. 22-year-old, who's going to be 23 coming up next year. But we're not going to age him too fast. This young cat, he's got a lot of things going on. He reminds me of a young, clean-cut, buff, big version of one of my favorite, you know, people. But, you know, hey, he knows who I'm talking about. It's Snoop Dogg, all right? So without further, you know, ado, okay, from here, we're going to go ahead and introduce Phoenix. You know, he's from NDSU, and in December of 2021, he had graduated with a bachelor's degree in management communication, but he's also known as a wide receiver. In football, you're golden, you're of light, Mr. Phoenix Broles. I mean, what else do we need to know and should we and the listeners and everybody here and all around and know, around the world know about who is Phoenix Broles? Wow, that might have been the best introduction I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, man, to know more about me, I mean, just like you said, you know, football, um, bachelor's degree, doing my master's right now, um, there's a lot going on. So I just want everyone to know that, you know, more than just a football player, um, got an off the field personality too. And uh, one day I hope to show you guys maybe on a screen here pretty soon. We'll see. Like, all right, so when we think about your degree, do you plan to do anything with that? Or, you know, as you said, you said you're going for your master's, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. When will you be finished with that? So this is my first semester of taking master's classes right now. Um, I will be done with college, though, after this after this semester because I'm going to pursue football. Um, so, you know, in a perfect world, uh, I would be a professional football player. So... I'm thinking a, a good, healthy career, anywhere between four to four to eight years uh, playing professional fo fo professional football and then coming back to, to finishing my master's then. So, um, you know, it could be four years from now and it could be eight years from now. So it's kind of, I mean, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how, how everything flows. Now, you can do whatever you want in this world. There are so many options and opportunity. Why football? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, geez. I think at the age of nine, my first time putting on pads, I uh, fell in love with the game. Uh, there's there's nothing that could make me feel the way how scoring a touchdown does or uh, making a crazy catch or making somebody miss. Um, and football has just given me so many positive influences on my life, whether it's being coaches or um, or the big one, teammates, uh, creating you know, that brotherhood. Um, all my best friends are all football players. Um, and it's just it's the family environment that you get from from playing football. There's, there's nothing that compares to it. So um, football is probably, if not my, it's probably more. It means more to me than life. It's it's what I've been doing for for almost geez, 15, 15 years, fifteen yeah, fifteen years, give or take. Um, and I, w- I want to keep doing it till I can't. So that's just how important football is to me. So far, and I've got to ask because you and I have not spoken of this. Um, Any injuries or have you stayed away from not having to see the hospital or anything else? Hopefully. Uh, I I got got a couple of (laughs) times with the injury bug. Um, Before college, I tore my uh, my left ACL in my knee. Um, So I was before college. So no, nothing until then. But um, in college, though, I had one major injury, uh, tore my right meniscus and my right knee. Um, in 20, 2020, um, that's the only injury I've ever had. Uh, but I played, you know, a lot of games. So, I mean, it, I guess COVID, you could say, even how bad COVID was kind of helped me out in a sense where, um, they gave everyone an extra year, uh, with athletics. So they granted everyone an extra free year, um, because COVID held a lot of people back and obviously some people didn't play a whole year. So, uh, without COVID, I probably would be pursuing the, with a professional career so i wouldn't even be in college right now so um yeah no go ahead go ahead oh i was gonna say so yeah just one injury just one injury in college but that is not something that's going to limit you obviously no not at all i've i've persevered way more than that so no it seems as though those are common industries or industry <laughs> injuries in football <laughs> am i getting that correct you are 100 percent correct. Um, you know, knee injuries are are major, especially being a wide receiver. You know, we cut a lot, we uh, change the direction quickly, we we stop on a dime. Um, you know, it happens. And uh, actually, mine was a mine was a contact injury. So usually they're non-contact ones. Um, so usually it's your own yourself. You make you cut and twist, and usually you tear your knee like that in football. But mine, uh, I got hit in the back of my leg and. Um, rotated my or rotated my knee, and that's what made my meniscus tear. Um, but yeah, they're they're very common. I don't I only answer if you're comfortable because I'm not going to be asking you a question. You know, for those who are listening, we've got my good friend Phoenix Sproles here. Uh, you're not concerned or worried about like arthritis or anything about you know when you're in your late 20s, early 30s, or is this just something you can really bounce back effectively? quickly ice it hot it whatever you need to do you're going to be good so actually uh i know for a fact i'm gonna at some point i'm gonna develop arthritis and probably probably both of these um and but that's kind of the risk you, that we know as football players and uh, especially with knee injuries anytime you tear your acl or have a pretty big surgery like that you're definitely gonna have a risk at arthritis um but thankfully um you know, nowadays there's a lot of more um, exercises and stuff that you can do. People are researching these knee injuries more and more. And I know of people that have had multiple knee surgeries on the same knee or both knees and are in their 30s and 40s and still doing whatever they were doing when they were in their 20s. Um, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. I know that there's always the possibility of you know developing that or or definitely having arthritis. But, you know, it's the risk we take as football players and and, um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than playing football right now. So if that's what comes with it. It's, I guess, so be it. You've uh, ever done acupuncture or will you consider doing it? Oh, yeah. I've, oh, dry. So I, we, we use, uh, so acupuncture is, that helps, but dry needling goes a lot deeper. Um, and that's a little more, way more painful than dry, than uh, acupuncture. So we'll actually, I've actually had my knee uh, dry needled. Or you you can bone peck, so you take the needle and go into the top of your uh, your bone on your by your knee, and you can tap your kneecap, so it can bleed a little bit, so it can help healing, so like tendonitis and st- things like that. 
So, like I said earlier, there's like a lot, a lot of new ways that uh, people are uh, protecting their knees now. And uh, bone pecking is one of them. So, like I said, the dry needle goes through your knee, not through, but uh, pretty deep, and you can peck the bone and make it bleed. Um, so the blood will help uh, heal that that tendon because tendon you need blood to heal. And um, yeah, dry needling my hamstring a lot. Um, just a whole bunch of preventative stuff just to stay healthy throughout the season and, and for the for the long of my career. I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm not joking. You taught me something because I've done. And I still do from time to time acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) you know how those needles are placed. That is more (laughs) than enough for me. But what you're telling me, hell no. (laughs) No way. And you're doing that awake? I've done, uh, so last year I did it almost uh, every week. Uh, This year, I haven't done it a lot this year. Um, I think because of last year, I think doing all that stuff last year helped me out to stay even healthier this year. So I haven't. I think I dry needle twice. I think this uh, this season, and um, yeah, it, it is painful, but again, it, it gets the job done. <laughs> How long do you sit there per session? Uh, it's actually it's not too long. So, so if you're just doing the bone pecking um, for your tendons or whatever you're, you're by your knee, um, that could be maybe two three minutes just pecking real quick, and oh. then yeah, it, it, yeah, it's. It, it, my whole body sweats. The table's all soaked because my body's sweating. Um, but it's, I mean, I, I, have a, I have a high pain tolerance. I have a bunch of tattoos. Um, so I'm not, I'm too, I'm not, not familiar with needles. So that kind of helps a lot. But if you're in, someone new to needles, I'd, uh, I'd advise having someone there to help you get through it because it, you're going to feel that for sure. Ooh, I, I, seriously, just to know the experience of acupuncture and what I've gone through with that in certain areas, especially when they like to, oh, we're going to go and get in between your toes. I'm like, oh, hell no. I've got a whole <laughs> body here. You're telling me you want to go between the toes to get to my neck? Uh-uh. I've got to get up here to the neck. Absolutely uh, not. not. Absolutely not. <laughs> but God bless it. Listen, you guys, and, and no BS, you do not get paid enough in your sport for what you have to go through constantly, the meals, the training, the risk, you know, you, even when you're training, you have no idea that you're going to come out better or the same as when you went in. Seriously, there is not enough millions on the table to compensate what you are risking. You, you said it, you said it. Um, Just being in college football for, um, five years now, I've seen, you know, guys get injured just, just, just working out, just workouts, not even actual game time. Um, you know, anything could happen at any moment, you know, especially how hard we train as college athletes. You know, it's just wear and tear on your body sometimes, you know, tendonitis, uh, shoulders, shoulder pain, impingements in your shoulder, um, back problems. I mean, you name it. Uh, it, it I mean, it happens. It's all it's all part of, you know, the lifestyle. We, we all, like, like I said earlier, like we all know the, the risks, but you just never expect it to happen to you. So, um, I mean, yeah, like I know football is not the most paid professional sport. Um, obviously there's a lot more players on a team than you know, baseball and basketball and other sports that pay more, but man, it's, it, it sucks sometimes. Cause I don't know these guys, uh, those professional athletes, I, I know what they go through. Um, and I mean, they deserve to get paid. Like it's, it's a grind and, uh, they deserve it. For those that are tuning in, we've got Phoenix Sproles here. Uh, in- incredible young, talented young man, only 22 years old. He's, uh, I'm going to say he's going to be, if not already a football legend. If you got any questions for Phoenix, head on over to power 985.com. Or if you're on the power 98.5 satellite radio app, click that bottom tick, that little thing right there in the bottom right hand corner send us in a question a suggestion your thoughts I've got some uh, questions for you and as you know I don't pre-plan anything however um, I was watching TikTok or on TikTok lately and I saw this one video and there were some suggestions of questions and I thought you know what there is no better person for me to ask some of these questions than you phoenix Mm -hmm. okay so what is your bucket list location and why 
That's a, that's a crazy, that's a really good question. <laughs> I t- well, um, thanks to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's good. I don't really think about that. Um, you know, being in college at North Dakota for, for five years and being a college athlete, you don't get a lot of time to, you know, go to, go to places. So I've actually, I've actually really wanted to go to Hawaii. I mean, it's still in the United States, but Hawaii it actually just sounds super cool. I don't know, just being on, on the beach or, or, um, attempting to surf or or trying to surf um and just being in that whole whole other side like i've never been been in jamaica i think when i was eight years old and that was like the only time i've been out of the united states but um obviously hawaii is in the united states but hawaii would be great i'd love to visit hawaii what are the top three lessons you would teach your younger self Mm. that's good uh, that's why I wrote them down. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. You know, I'm going to say the first one would be time management, uh, especially in college. I mean, high school, you know, you kind of have more time to do things. College, you're really on your own. You know, of course, you have help and stuff like that um, from academic uh, academic staff and um, whatever it may be, but you're, you're mostly on your own. So making sure you're doing your coursework. So I'd I'd have a calendar, which I do now and have had in college, but I wish I started that in high school. I have a calendar and I write, I write down everything and just check off whatever I did that day. So I, throughout that whole week, I get everything I need to do done. Um, so time management is one. Mm-hmm. And I would say for a second one, letting things go. Um, when I was younger, probably my, my freshman year, when I was 18, 19, um, you know, I'd, I'd hold on to a lot of things, whether they're negative or yeah negative most negative things actually so i'd hold on to them instead of just letting it go and and moving on or i guess football wise moving on to the next play you could call it um and just flushing that 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 i learned from uh he's a professional football player his name's adam Thielen. he plays for the wide receiver for the vikings um he does a flush thing which is just flushing whatever just transpired so he forgets all about it and i've tried to ingrain that into my life today, but, um, I wish I knew about that two, two, three years ago. Um, just to not hold grudges and whatever bad, ha- anything that bad happens, just flush it, let it go and move on. And then, uh, the third thing would probably be probably, probably stay more in touch with my, my immediate family. Um, you know, calling my mom or dad, step dad, step mom, brothers and sisters, um, you know, in college, you kind of forget that, you know, there's still a life outside of what, what I'm doing right here. And I, you know, I'd have a tendency not to reach out to people as much as I should. Um, they always contact me first. And uh, looking back at it, I know how, you know, as you get older, you know, people, your parents get older too. So I really need to start contacting them more. Um, just, you know, tell them you love them or just keep communicating because you never know. Uh, what could happen? So uh, if I could tell my younger self that, just to be in touch and check up on people, that, that would have made me a lot of better person today. I'm going to share something with you. And I've made it a point to never share anything uh, unless there's a darn good reason to. So mm-hmm. with that, I would like to gift you the opportunity to know how serious it is when not contacting someone and hope that with this new awakening of self-reflection of connecting with your family, especially your parents, I was adopted. So, um, I, I know the position you're in and I put career success and running from my past of not being of, of, It wasn't worry, Phoenix. It was more of wanting to be proud of who I am and knowing everything that my parents who adopted me of what they saw and believed in me, Mm -hmm. that there was still a part of me that was running from my past and why I'm where I'm processing saying this to you is it was because not that I feared I would ever be like my family with the decisions they made. I just didn't want to be associated or have anyone be like, oh my God, because you work so hard to get to where you are, reputation, mm-hmm. professional, and otherwise. 
it's almost like, and, and seriously, I, it, at one time it was embarrassment, but then I just got to the point to where when they say your past doesn't define you, it doesn't. But I also believe that in order for your past not to define you, you cannot have a connection to it in any way, even in thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, once again, I put success and, and my career and education and money and, and, you know, relationships that I've built that I felt were very important outside of family. And my mother, I believe she was in her seventies or so. It was, it's actually very weird, not weird, but ironic or, you know, serendipitous that uh, we're in this moment right now and that you had answered number three that way that I truly feel to to say to you is, you know, my mother was on her way driving to work, regular morning, and a guy coming from the opposite direction had a, uh, and, and I went hard into the de- detectives and everything to figure out, is this true? Is this really happened? But he had a diabetic episode and he passed out behind a wheel. What really pissed me off is I did find out from the detectives that this guy, uh, when they were investigating, he had coffee. He stopped for coffee and donuts. And I said to the detective, this guy who's diabetic, he knew he was diabetic. Why is he just drinking coffee and donuts and, and, knowing his situation and driving on the road. But he happened to hit my mother on a driver's side door, killed her instantly. It was all over the news. My whole point in sharing that is in my mission for success and and, um, self-empowerment and power and everything else to, to be able to make sure that I don't ever have to ask for a favor, that I don't ever have to go to my family and borrow money or anything else, to have lived many years somewhat in that fear, but also that determination to never have to ask for anything to be able to take care of myself. I put my parents and my family on the shelf, thinking that I would have all the time in the world to see them. And when that happened... Not only did I have a almost very difficult time forgiving myself and and for the fact that my mother's my, the last conversation I had with my mother Phoenix was a very tumultuous one, not on her end, on my end. Mm-hmm. And the any time where I had a difficult time when I was younger is I could not stand when people tried to get too close to me that lovey-dovey cuddle. I didn't come from a background where you did that. And I was was raised to be very suspicious of people that the more loving they are, what the fuck are they up to? <laughs> and yep. even with yep. my parents who adopted me, I still refused to let them love me the way they believed I deserved to be loved. So with that, um, thank God, literally for God, my best friend and everything that was aligned and set up uh, having that conversation with my best friend, Beck, um, she knew I would get through it, but I had almost a moment to where I did, I truly believed that I was not going to be able to get through the fact of not only the last things that I said, because my mother was trying to love me and I was rebuking that love and support, um, for the fact of my God, I chose Things, you know, I spent my entire life refusing to be loved, refusing that support because I didn't want to feel less than and I didn't want to feel like I failed because the moment I was scared to think of, ooh, when I asked for help, that that was going to tell me I failed. And Mm -hmm. so for what it's worth, um, with me sharing that with you, do your best to never, and I don't use that word loosely. I've learned a hard, hard lesson to not use the word never loosely. Put yourself in that situation. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because not everybody, you know, once again, no matter what support you have or how emotionally or mentally strong you are, depending on what you last have of a memory and experience with that in which is most dear and loving to you, there's no guarantee you'll be able to bounce back or forgive yourself. 
There isn't. Yes, sir. Jeez. I'm going to take all that in. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, um, so it's sitting with that. Uh, in this moment, I was going to go to another question, but what I have here in front of me when thinking about memories, and uh, we're look, I'm looking at your July 1st post on Instagram, and there was something that stood out very strong to me in this post, and you're with Jackson Howard, and there's a mm-hmm. photo of you two standing there. He's got the LSU hat in his hand, and then you have a photo connected to that of <laughs> You two, obviously younger, and you're in this park jersey, number 86. Tell yep. us about that. What was going yep. on? So uh, Jackson is my my little brother. Uh, well, <laughs> little big brother, as you can tell by the picture. Um, but, uh, man, he uh, he's a senior in high school this year. He just committed to Louisiana State University, LSU. Um, he's a four-star defensive end out of uh, my hometown, Minnesota. He's the number one ranked player in Minnesota in his class. And um, that that picture right there is uh, his commitment day that he did at his high school. I uh, drove back from college, um, was able to be there uh, with him, which is one of the uh, big days of, of my life, being able to support him. And um, and then the, the other picture is uh, when we first started, uh, he feels like yesterday's his, uh, his birthday's coming up this Sunday. He turns 18. Um, a little emotional, but uh, just really proud of him. Uh, extremely proud of him. He, uh, man, I feel like that's that's little little me, little me right next to me right there. <laughs> uh, we we've been at it for years. We, we've had the dream of uh, both playing in the NFL together, and um, you know it's coming to fruition. Uh, so he's going. He's graduating high school early in December, December, January. So he'll actually be moving to uh, LSU um, in December, January, uh, graduating high school early and starting football down there already. So it's, uh, it, it, time is flying and uh, man, that picture means a lot. And a comment from BJ Hill Jr. Yep. From the start, y'all were destined. Yes, sir. BJ, a uh, family friend. Grew up. So me and him started uh, um, elementary school together, elementary school, middle school, and high school. Uh, <laughs> we've been together since day one. Uh, really close family friend, brother of mine. And um, he, he knew uh, what me and my little brother's goals were. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that, that we have came in contact with. Uh, we both wanted to play at the highest level. And, um, you know, we're going to shoot for that until we can't. So. Um, just having his support, his support as well, uh, means the world. So I, I got some good people. Me and Jackson both have some good people in our corner. If money were no object, what would you do? Mm. Honestly, still play football. <laughs> uh, you know, that's obviously money is a is a, a reward. Uh, football is the real, the real treasure. Uh, playing the game that I, I grew to love uh, since I was nine years old, the way it makes me feel, the way it impacts others and uh, the, the relationships you create. I, you know, even if we didn't get paid um, the millions or whatever, I'd still be playing football somewhere. Um, yeah, that's all I know. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's more than, it's more than money. It's, it's more than a game. It's a, uh, it's football's a way of life. And your favorite, what's your favorite way to spend a day off? Mm-hmm. Man, I love days. I love off days. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a chance to recollect and get your body right. Um, you know, honestly, just making sure I'm eating my three meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, mm-hmm. and really just watching movies. I, I'm a big movie guy. Um, that's, and you'll ask anyone that knows me. Um, I love going to the movie theater. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, I get it from both my dad and mom. They both love going to the movie theater. My dad would always take me to see action movies and those old Western true grit and all those those Western movies. And then my mom would always uh, take me and my, my brothers and sisters to see, like, you know, all the kids' Disney movies. And 
the Harry Potters and Avengers and things like that. So, um, you know, it's something that's been instilled in our family um, is just watching movies. And I do that all by myself and I'll, I'll watch them for hours. I want to thank you with for being with us today, Mr. Phoenix Sproles, and congratulations on everything you're accomplishing, you're doing, soon to be obtaining your master's degree in communications. Um, anything additional you would like to share before we close out for today? Man, uh, you know, Stephen, I'm just very thankful and uh, just uh, just really happy that you gave me this opportunity to come on your show and uh, just to talk a little bit about me. Um, but you know, I, I just want people to know that um, you know there's there's more to me than what what people may see. Um, I know me and you had a conversation about it, but uh, you know there's more than social media, social media Phoenix. And uh, one day I hope everyone can get to learn that other side of me. And um, just thank you. You're welcome. We all know your social media handle on Instagram is Phoenix underscore Sproles. That's P H O E N I X underscore. S P R O L E S. You've also got a TikTok. Is that the same? Phoenix underscore Sproles. So uh, TikTok's different. That one is <laughs> it's a funny one. Uh, P underscore Drippy. So letter P underscore D R I P P Y. I don't know how. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I just thought of drip. I just thought I'll, you know I'm dripping. I had a nice little outfit on, so I'm like I'm dripping today. So I. Just, <laughs> So P drippy, P underscore drippy. I really like it. Seriously, no BS. I truly like it. For you, <laughs> yeah, it works. It, um, it works perfect. Perfect. It, it truly does. And I'm going to honestly say, as I told you before, your fashion's on point. Love your hairstyles, whether you've got that nice, you know, your latest post was this August 21st. I like it where it's like up in the bun, if that's what they call it. I'm not yes, too sure. Yes, sir. Yep. That yep. looks really good. Is that your current hairstyle or is it the one where you've got that nice fro? Yeah, I got the I got the line fro out today. I, I'm, I got, I'm going to change that up next week, though. I got to get it taken care of. Either way, those two styles really work. I like I it and I'm encouraging you to stick with it. I appreciate that. I, I will. Thank you. Any upcoming projects? What do we have to look forward to? That's all about Phoenix. <sighs> Um, I think, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lock in, lock in, uh, a, lo a lot more on football since it's my last go around, um, probably gonna be off social media as much as I normally am. Um, and just try and give everything I have for this last, this last season. So you're gonna see a lot more football stuff and, uh, and of my team as well. And protect those knees. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always. Who would you like to give a shout out to? I'm gonna shout. Out, I'm you know what, I'm gonna shout out my guys today. Uh, my whole football team at North Dakota State University. Um, love those guys. We got a big game against the University of Arizona this week, um, and I'm excited to go to battle with them. And um, looking forward to it. Awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you again, Phoenix, for being with us today on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. It, I, I can't wait to to witness more of what you're doing. And when you take a break from social media, you've got my private number. Don't hesitate to text, reach out, update. Remember what I shared with you. There's 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds in a day. When you remember to think about your family and your loved ones, you are still thinking about yourself and you're putting everybody first. So always keep that in mind. Yes, sir. Always. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I, I really appreciate uh, what you've done for me. So thank you so much. You deserve it, my friend. We're going to re-air this interview tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You can tune in to all things Power 98.5 on the iOS and Android app. Put it in, you know, add it into your Alexa skill. Or go to the Power 98.5 satellite radio station at power985.com. Once again, power985.com for all things sports, entertainment, news, and great, great interviews and guests just like Phoenix, Phoenix Sproles. Thank you again for uh, joining us today. Uh, once again, this interview with Phoenix Sproles will air tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Share with your friends, your family. And uh, Phoenix, I just want to ask you one more thing. And there was one more question. And this was just something 
that came to my mind that wasn't something I got from TikTok. What is yeah. the bigger picture for you? What does that look like? That looks like, uh, you know, if, you know, th through God, if, if it's possible, I'm hopefully going to be in the professionals of, in the NFL uh, making plays on Sundays. So that's, that's what you're going to see in the big picture. No, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I don't. Appreciate you. I appreciate thank you, thank you, you too. Absolutely. Thank you again, everyone, for staying with us today. Have a great, have a great week, great weekend, great rest of your year. It's going to be fall very soon. Break out the jeans, sneakers, boots, whatever it is that may have you. And yes, we're going to be able to get get back into the jackets again. I think I've like I've got to take all my summer clothes to Goodwill or uh, there's actually a, a place out here for. Um, military and I, I prefer taking it there if possible so find those bins that you can donate your clothes and, and items to um, to the military and and uh, help them out and uh, I don't know if there's anything for homeless but yeah whatever clothes you wore over and over again during a pandemic or summer if you can donate them have a great day everyone Socials and let's connect.